So welcome to uh, Advanced Assembly 1, part of the Advanced Assembly series of tutorials from Frodotime. What uh, we're going to do here, uh, basically, we're going to take a look at uh, uh, layers in this example. So we're going to open up uh, gear underscore FT uh, and show you a few ways to utilize layers to uh, make life a little bit easier uh, as your assemblies get big. Obviously, this is just a, a single part. Um, what uh, I'm going to demonstrate here is really what to do as you start to get a lot of uh, datum planes. Uh, because as you get uh, lots and lots of different components in there, uh, you're bound to get lots and lots of datum planes. So uh, what we'll do is actually let me go over to uh, the layer tree here. Uh, and what I want to do is all of these datum planes that were created uh, from a pattern Basically, I want to uh, place those all on a layer, but still keep uh, my datum one, uh, my horizontal and vertical, or kind of the standard ones, uh, the right, uh, and so forth. Uh, the standard ones that I usually want to use, uh, or at least see, uh, as I'm working on the model. So, uh, what we'll do is, uh, first off, create a, a new layer. And let me move over the layer properties here. Um, and what we'll do uh, is basically create a rule. Uh, I'm going to send this to independent. And uh, what we'll do is we're going to create a rule that uh, basically says uh, anything of the type, uh, and we'll say uh, is equal to uh, datum. And the value is uh, datum plane. So basically anything that's a datum, uh, put it in this uh, layer. Uh, what you'll see is it found 40 uh, items there. I can say OK. Um, and we'll say associative, so uh, any uh, changes to that uh, will automatically update that. So we'll say, uh, oh, let's give it a name here too. Let's call it, uh, uh, we'll just give it a name, uh, pattern underscore DTM for pattern datums. And say OK there. So. All of those layers uh, now that you'll see uh, are basically on, or that all of those datum planes are on that uh, on that layer. What we can do uh, if we attempt to uh, hide this layer, right-click and go to hide, uh, repaint it, and now you'll notice all the layers are gone. However, uh, we wanted to see uh, those three uh, default uh, datum planes. What we can do is actually right-click and go back to layer properties, um, and here's the properties for. Uh, of all the uh, items in this layer. And what we can do is, right now we're including all of these datums, what we can do is actually exclude. So we hit the exclude button uh, and exclude just uh, those three datum planes that we want to keep uh, in this display or on this layer. So we're going to exclude the right top and front, but uh, include uh, every other datum. So you'll see the exclude is denoted by this little uh, red minus. So we'll say OK there. And once again, do a little repaint. And now we have uh, what we're looking for. So uh, by placing all of those pattern datum planes uh, on that layer, uh, and then just uh, removing uh, kind of our standard ones, it's basically a quick way to start to, to manage uh, the display of datums. Because, of course, you always as your assemblies get big, you will want to see uh, some of the datums, but uh, like I said, uh, you know, once, once you have 100 or 1,000 parts, uh, it can get a little uh, messy and a little complicated. So uh, next thing, we'll actually uh, jump over to uh, simplified reps. OK, next thing to, uh, we're going to take a look at is uh, simplified reps. Um, let me go ahead and pull up this uh, motor assembly. Um, and just to kind of start off, we may deviate uh, off of the uh, actual training guide a little bit, uh, but uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, we should cover it fairly closely. Uh, but uh, simplified rep is basically a way to create a simplified representation of an assembly. Uh, maybe you don't necessarily need to see all of the detail, complexity, or all of the parts in an assembly uh, as you're working on it. Uh, for example, uh, if we're working on a, a smaller subset of this assembly, maybe we're just inserting these screws into this uh, base part, you may not necessarily care about the detail of, of each of these teeth on that gear or what's inside uh, of this uh, fan uh, assembly or motor assembly. Um, and 
pro-engineer in, in this case, uh, and I'll start off by saying this isn't the most complex assembly, but uh, as it grows in complexity, pro-engineer doesn't necessarily know that, hey, I'm only, you're only working on this area. So uh, there's a lot of resources uh, it, that it takes as takes up on, on your machine as your assembly gets bigger. Uh, so uh, by uh, simplifying things, uh, basically allows you to work on assemblies. Uh, things will regenerate faster, uh, spin around faster, and so forth. So everything that you're going to be accessing from a simplified rep standpoint uh, is going to be under the view manager. The view manager is basically a way to organize all the different types of views, uh, whether they're simplified reps, whether they're styles or component displays, which uh, we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, Cross-sections, uh, orientations, exploded, and all that good stuff. But uh, simplified uh, reps, uh, basically, uh, as you uh, begin uh, any new uh, assembly, is going to have uh, just kind of the basics. So you're going to have a default rep, master rep, master rep typically being uh, everything, um, and then uh, a few different ways to look at it, whether it's just the graphics, uh, just the geometry, and so forth, and the the uh, tutorial actually goes through a little bit more detail as far as what these are. What's important to you uh, is basically the, the ability that you can create your own uh, simplified reps. Uh, and what that means is uh, basically I can create a new rep. Uh, we'll call it, uh, uh, well, let's just go with rep01. I'll hit enter. Um, and then basically, um, Pro engineer is going to say, all right, well, what components do you want to exclude from uh, this uh, representation? Or the vice versa, what uh, do you want to include? Uh, I usually use exclude, you know, because then I can start to pick stuff that I may not want to necessarily see. So I can say, all right, well, let's uh, remove uh, that gear, remove the cover. Uh, if we look at the model tree as well, it'll show you uh, within the model tree. Uh, maybe I don't need this cover. Um, and then maybe I don't need to see these screws. So I could go through and, and pick all the screws, or I can just pick them uh, within the model tree as well. I can preview it, see what it looks like. Uh, maybe that uh, looks pretty good, or maybe I don't want that uh, magnet and shaft in there as well. So I'll add those on there and then say OK. So what we've got here uh, and denoted down uh, uh, in gray is basically uh, telling us which simplified rep uh, we're working on here. So um, we are working on simplified rep, rep 0001. Uh, if at any point you want to uh, redefine that, uh, oh, no, no, don't want to remove it, uh, redefine it, uh, you can redefine it. Um, you can also uh, rename it and copy it and so forth. And so let's go ahead and close that. So that uh, now, of course, you can just work on it just uh, like any normal assembly. When I close this up and we go and pull it up again, uh, motor assembly, you'll notice I can open up uh, the entire assembly since uh, we have it's still in session. Uh, it's going to be set uh, to whatever we're working on it. Let's go ahead and change it back to our master rep. Uh, close this up. And then when I open up the motor assembly, I have the option to open it, or I can open the rep. Uh, and here I can select uh, that rep that, uh, that we just created. What's unique or cool about this is if you do have that really complex assembly that takes a you know, half hour to pull up, uh, you can create just you know what are those typical simplified reps that you work with. Uh, and then open up just the representation and work on the area. So you don't necessarily have to pull everything into session uh, to uh, be able to work on stuff. So.